If you want to be a cool kid, be a pirate. If you want to be a really cool kid, be a pirate leader. But however cool and piratey you become, you'll never be as cool as Ching Shi. Ching Shi was the leader of one of the biggest pirate fleets of all time. But her story doesn't start so gloriously. And yes, she was a woman. Chin was just a 26-year-old prostitute in Canton when Cheng, who was the leader of a small fleet called the Red Flag Fleet, sacked her brothel and brought her on board for himself. She accepted to marry him only if she was given an equal share of plunder and authority, though many disputes she was able to make such or any conditions at all to a pirate leader. With Qin Shi at his side, Cheng made his 200-ship gang into a proper army of around 1,800 ships and 17,000 pirates ready to kick ass. Their looting was the most fearsome and many pirate captains wanted to form an alliance with them or just simply fight under the red flag. Six years after the marriage, they realized that they weren't happy. She filed for divorce stating irreconcilable differences and there would, no, no, that's not what happened. Cheng died in a storm and Qin Shi took over the leadership. She made her adopted pirate son second in command and let him lead the battles, although she was still the one deciding on the strategies of warring. Qing Shi was also aware that it wasn't easy to be a badass pirate and accept a woman as a leader. So she made a system of laws to show that she wasn't messing around. If you disobey an order or give an order that wasn't originally hers, you get beheaded. If you steal anything from the treasury, you get beheaded. If you hide some of the loot, you get beheaded. If you rape any of the prisoners, you get beheaded. But on the other hand, if you have consensual sex, the girl gets cannonballs as anklets and gets dropped in the sea, and you also get beheaded. If you tell a really cheesy joke, you get beheaded. Well, maybe not that last one, but you really didn't want to do anything she didn't want you to. Especially, at, you know, at, at that time of the month. The only exception was that if you try to abandon the fleet, you wouldn't get beheaded. You would get your ears chopped off and paraded along so that everyone could see. Ching Shi developed the administrative side of the whole pirate stuff, as she had towns and provinces pay taxes, ships pay toll for free passage, knowing that if they didn't, they wouldn't last long. She had 80,000 pirates under her helm, farmers who supplied food, spies in the emperor's army, and was pretty much unchallenged in the South Chinese Sea. Once, some guys wanted to be brave, and boy were they wrong. Two towns united and raised an army against her. They went out to fight her, shamefully lost, got their town sacked, and every man found was left without a head. I guess that was just her thing. Now, as you can imagine, the Emperor of China wasn't all too happy about an indestructible army of pirates doing whatever they want in his lands. He raised his imperial fleet and attacked Qing Shi. It seemed to somehow slip the Emperor's mind that Qing was an exceptional military strategist and his fleet was defeated with 63 ships stolen. Qin was also a very persuasive woman and made many of the imperial soldiers choose to become her pirates. And these soldiers did have an alternative, the alternative being getting nailed down, literally nailed down and beaten to death. And knowing Qin, they were probably beheaded later as well. The emperor was a teeny bit wiser now and decided to pay for the help of the English and the Portuguese who were at the time the biggest naval forces in the world. And, as you can imagine, two biggest navies in the world against a chick pirate, there was only going to be one winner. And that winner was Ching Shi. After doing everything there was really to do, the emperor found a different approach. He offered her an amnesty, which she immediately refused. However, she changed her mind and decided to accept the peace treaty only if all of her crew would be given the amnesty and they would get to keep the loot acquired. The emperor agreed. After the retirement, Ching Shi opened a gambling house and a brothel, which she ran successfully until her death at the age of 69. She died with a noble title of Lady by Imperial Decree, which granted her legal protection that only the aristocracy enjoyed. Not bad for a girl who started off as a prostitute. Be sure to like and share the video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next week!